Ed is a scuba dive instructor, bar owner, but he's been doing so much amazing work himself on this house. It's really incredible. <laughs> you said it's all from YouTube and friends, right? YouTube, friends, <laughs> trial and error, um, necessity. Um, yeah, pretty much. Yes, 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 yes. There's lots that can be done if you just take your time and you know watch the YouTube videos and stuff. And, it makes a huge saving on any renovation costs. Yeah. Hi everyone and welcome to Seek Sustainable Japan. My name is JJ Walsh. I'm your host as we dive into ideas and solutions and strategies which help us find a better life, work and travel balance uh, between the needs of people, planet and profit. And there's no better topic in Japan right now than how to make good use of old houses, which are abandoned, often called akiya in Japan. These old minka or kominka traditional houses have such good materials and have so much value when they're reused. So this time we're going to snow country and talking with Ed. When I first met Ed in 2022 at the first Minka Summit in rural Kyoto, his ideas about rebuilding community, not only reusing these houses, but bringing in people to be a part of communities really impressed me. If you're interested in this topic, make sure to click on the link below for the entire playlist. I've interviewed many people over the last few years about this topic uh, who are designers, carpenters, entrepreneurs making good use of old structures in Japan. And I'm sure I'll have many more. So make sure to subscribe, hit the bell icon, and maybe even join as a member so you don't miss future videos. I wrote about Ed and the houses he was renovating, the people he was bringing into the community in this Japan Times article in 2022. And it really struck me as so unique and something that we should be doing in various rural areas around Japan. Ed gives us so much great advice on this house tour and insights into the process of renovating old buildings in Japan. Stick around for the end when he gives us a tour of his antique shop. I met at the Minka Summit. The original Minka Summit. Two the years first ago, Minka Summit. In Kyoto, yeah. right? Yes, yes. And um, so it's, I interviewed Ed on my show two years ago, yes. was it? Before the, after the Minka Summit? Yeah. And it uh, just seems like a really long time ago. So it was such a great chance to come and be able to see his house in person. Uh, should we walk around, see sure. your beautiful house? Sure. So this is, we're starting in the front room. And you said you're thinking about changing this into a dining room? Yeah, so this will be wooden flooring from here to there, then a window seat to sit and chill, read books, and also double up as a dining area thing. Uh, a lovely couple who moved into a Kaminka down the road gave us this uh, table. It's actually an English um, 19th century writing desk. Um, How did it end up here? The guy who had the Kaminka collected all sorts of antiques from all over the world. Sadly, he butchered it and cut about 20 centimeters of height off it oh, to make it Japanese height. To make it lower. Um, oh my goodness. Now what I've a got, shame. Now I've got to try and raise it again. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a beautiful old, old piece of it furniture. It really is. Gorgeous. Um, so that'll be then our, because we haven't really got a dining area at the moment, so that'll be our dining area. And what a fabulous dining area with the view. Yeah. Just the natural light coming in. And mm. you've done this beautiful, you said very simple, uh, job, but it looks really beautiful. What is it? A thin kind of bamboo? Yeah, so it's the, the bamboo roof? reed matting that you get in the um, uh, the hardware stores for the summer to cover the windows to keep the sun out and stuff. Super cheap, especially if you buy it at the end of summer. Um, and then it's just cut to size and um, held on with um, pieces of wood running laterally or staples depending on, on the situation. And that's what it's usually used. You can see outside the window of the office here, you can see the same the same material, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, Hanging exactly. outside the window to keep the shade inside. Yeah. 
bought it, you had to expose a lot of the beams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This room actually was very much um, like this, apart from the ceiling was like a fake wood, which was really in a bad way because it had been there for a long time. And with the fake wood, there's nothing you can do with it. You can't sand it, you can't paint it. Um, so this was the best option for us and it worked out really well, I think. Um, it was all doors. There wasn't a single wall in the place, but in the winter here where we get 12 meters of snow sometimes, um, it gets pretty chilly and it's hard to heat a house that's just doors. So we put some, put some walls in. Um, also a good place to have light sockets and plug sockets and the things that you need in modern life. Yeah, isn't um, that, a lot of people talk about the difficulty of putting sockets in. Yeah, it's very hard. If, the you, walls... if you don't want the wiring exposed <laughs> and, and stuff, it's really, really hard. Because a lot of the walls are just bamboo and dirt, yep. right? There yep. is no space. No, no, there's no, no place to run cables unless you start digging in. And you it. chose uh, to keep the tatami, but you put insulation underneath? Yes, so all the floors were ripped up at the beginning of the renovation and we um, put new timbers in where they were needed to level the floor and strengthen the floor and then put um, neofoam, six centimeter insulation in between each of the uh, beams, which seems to have helped a lot. And it also helps with moisture as well. Um, yeah, it's been, uh, it was definitely a worthwhile investment. Um, to put that in. In snow country, it's kind of essential. And you lived for a long time in Indonesia as a dive instructor. 11 so years. I, I see a mix of Japanese antiques and some Indonesian touches as well. Or a little bit, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah things we brought with us. Though we didn't bring much apart from flip-flops and board shorts. Um, <laughs> but we, we, yeah, we, have, we have brought some stuff over for sure. Um, yeah, and but a lot of antiques that we found in this property or in other properties and um, that were filled with treasure. Looks in really good shape. Yeah. This one had a really cool secret. Uh, this one, I think. Had a secret drawer at the back. Secret drawer? Which had loads of like Meiji and Taisho era coins in it what? and all sorts of stuff. That's yeah. really cool. Didn't find it until we we're moving it. Very That's cool. That's amazing. And maybe people who inherit those don't even know, right? No, 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 for sure. <laughs> Probably forgotten about it in the midst of time. <laughs> and did you do anything to a lot of these antique pieces? Most of these have just been cleaned. Um, originally, when we found some for the other house, I, I sanded them back and restained them and stuff. But uh, we kind of like the sort of, you know, the, the weathered, lived-in kind of look. Um, so we tend to leave them now as much as we can. Yeah, gorgeous. And it's time to introduce your doggy. Ah, uh, yes. So this is Iwa-chan. Hi, the, Iwa. The third member of our family. He was a rescued Japanese Tosa. Um, currently weighing in at a chubby 63 kilos. Wow. Um, and yeah, she's the queen of the house. And then in the winter, we don't try and heat the whole house. It's crazy to try and heat the whole thing. So you just do room to room. This is our kind of winter enclave. Oh, nice. This is your master bedroom. Yes. And this is our winter studio apartment. So and you've got some beautiful pieces. Are these just antiques you've salvaged from other houses? These were either here or from houses that I've helped demolish or that were going to be thrown in the gommy and nobody wanted them and... Yeah. If anybody wants to come and pick up antiques, please <laughs> feel free. Come and so what kind of, for winter, you've got the double glazing. Double glazing on the outside. And then you've got the shoji on the, shoji inside. on the inside. When we first moved in, that was just shoji. There was no glass. What? How did they survive? I have no idea. But they had an AC. But still. But, but, but that would in the main room, and then some of the windows were just paper. That would have been like camping. Yes. In winter. Very much in so. In Nagano. And these doors, are these These original? are original. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you have to do much to them? No, I haven't actually touched those ones. I should. Oh, we oh, changed, the, changed the shoji paper, but... Um, it was a beautiful red color. Yeah. And you've got all these beautiful little features of the house. Were they here? They or were all here, yeah, 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 yeah. And the Dhamma? The Ranma is not the original Ranma. When we moved in, it had um, shoji paper staple, uh, pinned there. What? Um, and some really horrible doors here. Um, so we got rid of the doors. I'm in the process of renovating some other doors that will fit here for the winter. Um, and this we picked up in a, these we picked up in a second hand shop in Carrier's Hour, I think, for like 25 bucks. 
And they're really cool because when the light's on in there and it's dark in here, the pattern goes onto the wall. Oh, like a shadow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's oh, really nice. <laughs> it was an unexpected um, thing, but it works really well. Beautiful. And then we did Shikui in this room, which <sighs> it's hard work. Really? The plastering? The plastering, yeah. Because the walls were all original Chuchikabe and really rough and all over the place. Oh, okay. Um, so to make it look... We like couldn't make it flat. We flat -ish. Tried, so we just went with our free, free, free style, I guess. No, it um, looks beautiful. You've done a gorgeous job. Uh, some of these walls have got five layers on to get rid of the original like um, color and moisture coming through and stuff. And you found once you did those five layers, it was good enough yeah, during yeah, the yeah. winter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it sealed up some of the gaps around the edges and stuff. So. You'll, you, I don't know how long you've been here, but you might find we've we found the shikui over time. It moves away from the corners. Yeah. You have to redo it. Redo but, it. Yeah. But it's it's a nice natural yeah alternative, no. and it looks beautiful. A friend of ours is really good at it, and he makes it look super easy to make it super flat and really pretty. And yeah, we tried. We were just tearing our hair out. So um, <laughs> yes, and then this used to be the Engawa. And yeah. the dog's bed. And the dog's throne. It's a great view. The yes, dog has a great it. view. By the fire. By the fire. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now this is great in the winter because we just sit here and you can see out onto the rice fields which are all stepped when in the snow and stuff. Get deer coming down oh, onto the rice beautiful. fields. Beautiful. Um, we get Kamoshka in the garden sometimes coming up. Tanaki, Kitsune. Um, it's a really beautiful area and you've got unobstructed views you don't have other buildings in front of you at all it's that was amazing the main reason we bought the house it certainly wasn't for the condition <laughs> the neighbors were all like there's so many nicer houses why are you buying that house but you don't have any unobstructed yeah right? exactly. view is amazing yeah. it's unusual very yeah, yeah, yeah. very the one the, the two buildings we can see are both like traditional kaminka style buildings as well which is really nice mm -hmm. Um, yeah, eventually I'll get round to the garden. <laughs> what are you thinking for the garden? Like Simple. What I've discovered <laughs> is that I don't like gardening. Uh -huh. So it's good there'll, to know that. there'll be a lot of stone <laughs> and a lot of pebble and sand and other stuff. Um, the hardest part's the slope at the front. The slope's like 60 degrees. Wow. And the weeds, are, as you know, in Japan, just go like, Pah! so trying to clear that with a brush cutter is, is really hard work. Um, so this year I'm going to have a go at putting some seeds down for low growing plants and see if that helps. Maybe a stone lantern? A stone lantern maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, these, um, these grinding stones. Oh, those are beautiful, yeah. I've salvaged like 30, 40 of them. Oh, yeah, putting, you're putting it into the garden? Yeah. That's a good idea. They're, They're nice stepping stones, aren't mm. they? I mean, it's kind of a shame not to use them as grinders, but that would be a whole nother lifestyle. Yes, and, and that was that was Trevor's house. Trevor. Trevor, my, my friend, pre-winter in October, driving down from his lodge in Madurao, hit an owl, oh. and it needed rehabilitation, so he brought it to me. So we had an owl living above our garage for the whole of the winter, while its wing healed, and so feeding it daily and. And so that was the owl's house. That was his house when he was living upstairs, and then we put it out here when we released him in April. Just in case he needed somewhere to live. Did he ever come back to visit? Nope. You just, thanks, ciao, bye, <laughs> Oof, gone. But the whole idea was that we didn't, I didn't spend too much time with him so that he was still wild and he could go back to the wild. He was, that's our view for the winter. Beautiful and the summer view. As well, of course. So you've got the terraced rice paddies over there in the mountain. Yeah. Just on the other side of that mountain is Nozawa Onsen Village and Nozawa Onsen Skijo. Um, yeah, it's beautiful. We don't, we don't grow any vegetables, but we get given vegetables constantly all summer. The neighbors are just constantly giving us curry and tomatoes and pumpkins and everything else, sweet uh, watermelon. So in return, we kind of bake things every now and again, or I go fishing and bring trout and hand them out to the villagers, kind of a barter system oh. reciprocal thing. Are you like fly fishing? Yes. Kind of fishing? Fly I fishing. Love fishing. No, in the rivers. Yeah, 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 yeah. And there's a couple of lakes here as well that have nice trout and yeah. It's, that's my little zen time away yeah. from away from work. Away. Uh, this will all be done, ripped out and redone. 
Oh, it's it got, you know, decent structure though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lick of paint, some sanding, some varnishing, maybe change the ceiling. Living little. in an old house, you're probably always looking at everything thinking, I want to change that. I got to update that. I got to fix that. It's kind of never ending. <laughs> I like little projects and now I can do it at my own pace, um, whereas the initial renovation we, we set ourselves a really hard target because we'd already rented out the house we were living in before from a certain date. So we had seven months to turn this from hell to heaven. Right, so, right. So uh, it was hard. How long before you could actually live in it? Like livable? Seven months and we were, it seven. was livable. Okay. Uh, yeah, and then since then we've been carrying on doing little bits. but. For, so if anyone's thinking of taking on this kind of project, I would heartily recommend that you work on the house while you're not living in it. It makes such a difference being able to leave and go somewhere clean and come back to the project the next day rather than living amongst it. Um, and living in a like an ongoing construction site is not very relaxing. No, right? it's hard work. Yeah. And Japanese, it's so cheap to rent properties in Japan. You can usually rent a, like a, an Inuka property for like three, four hundred bucks a month. Right. So rent that place, live in that. Do the renovations. That's very good advice. <laughs> um, ceiling was dropped down to here, false ceiling, horrible polystyrene tiles and fake wood on the walls. And um, so basically the same as most of the house, we just ripped everything out and then spent days. These are the original um, ceiling boards and they're the floor to the upstairs. Sanding these back, staining them, varnishing them. Um, Redoing the walls, change the doors for original ones again, um, put a new floor in. Uh, all the house has got new floor with insulation underneath. What kind of insulation did you use? It's called Neofoam. It's about six, seven centimeters thick and solid like foamy with a vapor barrier on it. Um, and that fits in between the, the lateral joists for the, for the floors. And that seemed to work? Yeah, it helps. Last yeah. winter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's definitely not as cold as it would have been. And when we re you have to redo the floors anyway because they're all very spongy when you move in. So uh, putting new joists in, doubling up the wood on top, and then putting decent hardwood floors in and stuff. And then we kept the original sink, the, s the stainless part, um, and then basically built a kitchen around it out of recycled wood from uh, a Komibitsu. So the rice storage containers. Okay. Uh, there's one in the in the genkan oh, that we use as a cloak rack. We had uh -huh. another one in the barn. We stripped all the wood off it, and then basically built the entire. Me and a very good friend, Jan Paolo, who's a fantastic cabinet maker. Um, we built it all from scratch out of recycled wood. Wow. Um, and that's part of this. Yeah. It's beautiful. Now this was uh, this I had to buy separately off a very lovely guy who. Um, has a Kaminka restoration company in Nakano who has a massive selection of wood and do original doors and everything else and he's just happy for people to use them. Um, but the base part? The base part was all from us, for all from here. It all came out of the Kura. Mm. Um, in total, every, without the appliances, the kitchen cost us Yongman. Yongman? So 40,000 yen? No way! And you chose uh, to stick with gas. Was it gas before? It was gas before. Gas is not the cheapest. Um, but we really like the gas guy. He's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and he's super helpful. Um, and he's been great. So yeah, we stuck with gas. And we have a little gas heater for the winter so we can space heat this room kind of thing. Um, in this house when we moved in was the exposed wiring with the little white things that stick out and stuff. Which I love. And we've, carried, we've kept it in one room just modernized it a little bit to make it a bit safer. Um, and I'll definitely redo that in the in the Kura. We'll definitely have some exposed wiring in there and stuff. I think that I'd really like it. It's very cool. I noticed there's not a lot of shops around here. There's not a lot of, well, I mean, we it feels very countryside, but the, we've got a local conveni, a Yamazaki, in, on the corner of the village. It's very basic, but very, very nice. We, we really like the people that, that own that. Um, and then by car, seven minutes away, Lawson. And then same distance to the main village of Nozawa where there's little shops and stuff. And then you're 20 minutes from um, Iyama where there's 
three supermarkets, three hardware stores, Shinkansen Station. Um, and I discovered your best onsen down the hill. Ah, down the hill, yes, Yutaki, yes. Which that's you're members of. Season pass members, <laughs> yes. Regulars. How much was it? 30,000 yen a year? 30,000 yen a year. <laughs> we basically can't heat water for the same amount of money, so we just go there every day. Amazing. The shower here, we pretty much put in for guests. And if in the summer it's too hot or I'm too dirty to go to the onsen because I've been working in the in the house, um, then we just have a rinse off there and then go to the onsen. Amazing in the winter, as you can imagine. Oh, I imagine. Look at that main beam in the middle of the roof there. Mm. The roof used to go from either side of that and that was the center of the building. And then the main building itself is actually, I think it's an old kura, but a really mm. big one because it's got all beautiful beams like this and, um, but they're in the process of ripping that to pieces at the moment. Um, and then the two small extensions were added like 40 years ago or something. Have you thought about doing anything like putting solar on? I don't see a lot of solar around here. Is that because of the snow? It's purely because of the snow. You'd have to put it on the side of the building. You couldn't really put it on the roof because it would either get crushed um, by the weight of the snow or it would stop the snow sliding off the roof. Um, or make it slide off quicker. No, because no. It, it comes out. So anything that stops like that perfect slope will just, it'll hold the snow. Um, yeah. So unless you could find a way to fit like flexible panels and fit them like snug to the roof. Yeah, it's not going to help at all. Mm. Uh, and Panasonic's doing that now. Right? I've got, I put them on my camper. Uh huh. It works on my camper. Um, but we don't use that in the winter. Ooh, yeah. You've made some beautiful choices in your redesign. <laughs> Thank you. It's, Is that just it, like it's definitely and not our, Yeah, it's definitely not our forte. We're, <laughs> we're, we're terrible at imagining things. Yeah, I mean, there's certain things that I haven't got round to yet. Um, there's not much left to do that, that, um, that we kind of um, want to do, but there is still some stuff, yes. Wow, so what do you use this room for? That's Iwa's dinner room. <laughs> it's a beautiful dinner room. <laughs> um, and it's also where we have the electrics and you know, we left some of the old um, materials of the building exposed and stuff so people could see it but it's also the that's how you get to the Kura in the garage okay so in the winter you can get from mm -hmm. the house to the road without stepping on a on snow mm -hmm. um, oh wow and you have a little bit of storage down here yeah that used to be like a miso making room I think those are gorgeous old barrels do you want one <laughs> I don't know if I can fit in my car. I'm tempted. <laughs> I need, and we've still got stuff upstairs to take and put up there. So, please make some space for us. <laughs> and uh, I don't think we've said so far, but can you tell us how much you bought the place for? <laughs> Closely guarded secret. Um, the the property itself was had been empty for seven, eight years when we bought it, and we bought it for one and a half million. That's just incredible because it's such a big, it's huge property. It but is. they thought of it all the structures as trash. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So they probably discounted the land price because of the structures. Yeah. But you wanted to use the structures, right? We wanted to keep everything, which. Blew, blew their minds and the neighbors' minds. Yeah. They were all like, why are you buying that house? It's horrible. Oh, uh, did they? Yeah, they yeah, really yeah. It was that. in such a bad way. Uh-huh. But we we found this house by living, we lived used to live about 300 meters down the road and we were walking the dog through the village and Ewa wandered in here one day and she wandered around to the front of the house and we'd never been around there. And there's this amazing view and we didn't know it was there. And it had a bench in there. So whenever we were walking the dog, we'd come and sit in here and with the dog when it, while it was empty and just like a joke about how this would be our new house. And then one day it just, we just got in touch with the owners and like, do you want to sell it? And they were like, yes, please. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. And like we were saying at the front, it's an obstructed view. Yes. It's so hard to find even in the countryside in Japan, right? It is, it is, it is. A friend of ours took, spent 10 years trying to find his Kaminka that didn't have um, like a electricity pylon or another house, etc., in front of it. 
There's no, there's no wires. There's no houses. <coughs> You've just got beautiful fields and mountains. It's yes. really beautiful. And in the winter, tons of snow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is the bathroom? Oh, this is the bathroom, yeah. Yep. This wasn't here originally, so we put this in. Um, although you said the bathroom was in a really cold part of the house before? It's at before. the front there, so that's now Ewa's bathroom, but it's exposed to the exterior walls and it wasn't insulated and it was very, very old and cramped. Um, so we put this in. Um, once again, recycled materials from the rice storage container made into flooring. And you said you were sanding around the numbers. So another tip, if you're going to do the same thing, <laughs> Don't sand around the numbers, it's madness. Oh, really? No, really? no, no. Make sure that you don't sand them off completely yeah. and then redraw them in afterwards. Oh, okay. It's much easier. <laughs> <laughs> and you have like a secret door at the end uh, that you so added? The, um, the, uh, uh, the rice storage container has a, a hatch at the bottom where you let the rice out. And I couldn't get rid of it because I'm terrible with, with wooden things. Um, so I put it out of the way where people could stub their toe, but that's the original um, slidey door where they let the uh, let the rice out. So this would be vertical. Oh, what do you keep in there now? I should write treasure and stuff. <laughs> yeah, 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 not that we have any treasure. Little coins. Little coins. You said you found some Showa coins. You could put those in there. Taisho made you coins, yeah. Oh, right. And then, yeah, just very simple. But you, know, you said you did the tiling. Tiling, first time I've ever done it, came out okay. Very good, um, and tell us about the mirror. The mirror was an old piece of wood that I found in the shed, which um, had a beautiful texture to it. So just um, jet washed it and then made the frame and then just put a layer of oil on it and it's come out really nice. Really nice. And you just hang it from the top. Yeah, we've bought this cabling from a hardware store and crimped it all in. And I kind of like that sort of simple. And you said you've been hiring professionals for when you need it, like electricians, electricians builders, yeah. carpenters, plumbers, um, structural stuff. We get uh, professionals in, but for the rest of it, we pretty much try to do everything ourselves. My wife, thank God, Naomi is very gung ho and very dab hand with this stuff as well. So, Can you give us an estimate how much you've spent on renovations? Uh, by the time we finish the garage renovation and the Cora, It'll probably owe us around 10 million. But you got the house for one and a half. Yeah, that's included in that. So oh, it's included. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. 10 that's million, all in. including everything. Yeah, including buying us the house, all the renovation, and then that'll be, a, and then by the time the core and the garage are done, there'll be two separate apartments on the property as well. Um, which will, which are basically for friends to use. Amazing. And you, you were talking about, uh, maybe selling it like this is not for sure somewhere that you want to live forever. Uh, we'll live here for as long as we can. Um, but um, snow country can be very hard work. Um, if you've never lived in it, it's nice to come and visit. Um, but um, we see some of our neighbors who are one of the one of the chaps is 93. And he's still on the roof shoveling snow at 93 no. years old. So. You, I mean, getting up on the roof during winter to get snow off the roof yep. sounds like the hardest part of living here. It is. is. That right? It is very difficult. Yeah. yeah, yeah and yeah. if you don't do it, the snow will collapse the roof, if right? If the roof isn't self-shedding, then yeah, it can easily build up. Because, I mean, we can get a meter overnight. So yeah. you wake up on the morning, there's a meter. And then oh another morning, gosh. there's another meter. And then the, after that, you've got to clear the roof. There's a... There's a rule of thumb amongst the local OG chans, and they say if you're living in a house like this um, during the winter and there's snow gathering on the roof, as soon as your doors won't slide, it's time to clean the roof. Oh, so interesting. The, the pressure of the roof is pushing down on the door lintel so much that the doors are becoming hard to slide. Definitely time to clean the roof. That's a good rule. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I mean, I'm sure you can do things like this cheaper for sure, but we spent a lot on double glazed windows. Um, all new electrics was not the cheapest thing in the world. Insulation, not cheap also. There's a lot of grants out there, but um, there's a lot of hoops to jump through also to yeah. get those grants. And you did look around a fair bit, right? Yeah, you, we looked around a really lot of places. You were really making sure you found somewhere you love. And, yeah, yeah. And then you've renovated other houses that we're going to see <laughs> over the next few days. And you've gotten friends to live in, right? Yes. yes. We managed to bring in a really nice community of people into the village. We were the first um, non-local people who moved in. Um, and now we've got, um, in our first house, we've got a lovely family with three kids who are living there, Stephen and Celinda. Um, 
And they now, um, they're taking that property off us permanently after renting it for a while. Um, and then another friend of ours from uh, Indonesia, he's Canadian, she's Spanish and they're two uh, young children. They, we found them a house during COVID. They couldn't come and see it, but I was like, buy it, it's beautiful. Um, and they bought it and they saw it for the first time beginning of this year. Wow. And they're here at the moment. Just Were they happy with it? Ah, oh, super stoked. Yeah, good, yeah. Good. It was, It was like a move-in ready Cominka. Wow. Um, and then we've got a lovely couple moving in next door who are re currently starting their renovation journey in their first ever house. Um, she's German, he's Brazilian, Japanese. And then uh, there's also some people who are... Um, took on a minka that was damaged, uh, Patrick and Hannah. Um, they've got a big project ahead of them. Uh, they've got some amazing plans and stuff like that. Mm. Um, so uh, yeah, very excited. Sounds like oh yeah, more beautiful antique. Yes. Furniture. And this was all like this height. So everything had to be sort of raised as much as it could. I'm very impressed with the minimalist wardrobes. Yes, yeah, yeah, we had an ironwork guy just make us some rails and especially um, in the summer when it's so uh, moist and humid, having that airflow stops things going moldy and blah. Um, it just looks so much nicer too than all the doors. Doors, and all that, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, that's not, that's not Japanese houses, I don't, I don't think. I think everything's sort of, um, yeah. So yeah, that was a little project. And it's also my nighttime route to the toilet. Yes, you need Very that. important in my you age. You need that. <laughs> this wasn't here. This was kind of a reception area with an iori and stuff. But the iori was buried under tatami. It wasn't used. It was in a bad way. Um, and the original bathroom was on the outside. Well, on the exterior wall of the house. Very cold, especially in the winter. And uh, so we built this um, bathroom. You have to have a nice, comfortable bathroom. It's so important. Yes. Just a unit shower that we walled in and then... These are more of the pieces of wood for the, from the rice storage container. Oh, that's awesome. You got the numbers on them. Sanding around the numbers. Oh, interesting thing interesting. to do. It took me a while. Very cool. So when I talk about the rice storage container that we used. Hello, doggy. Hey, Pooh. It's basically, it's one of these. They find them in a lot of houses here. I don't know if it's a, a, an old Japan thing or... Oh, so this is a storage container you made into a... a uh, this a is now our cloakroom, but it used to be a rice storage container. So all the sides up to the top have these wooden slats. Okay. And then you can take them out, put them in, and then they basically filled it with rice. And then it had a hatch at the bottom where you got your rice out. And there was one in the barn. And so that's what we made the flooring for the bathroom, the kitchen, the drawers for the kitchen, loads of stuff we've made out of this. Um, yeah, this used to be the stable for the horse. Oh, wow. So that was where they dropped the food down from above. And that, that's the, the lock for the stable door. <laughs> oh my gosh. And this is your horse now. This is our horse. Yes. Hello, horsey. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see from here, we didn't do much structural stuff with regards to straightening out the beams and things like that. We just made sure they were all solid and, um, and then kind of left it. Um, this one's got quite a lean on it. Oh yeah. You can see at the bottom on the stone, right? Yeah. But you're you're okay with that you yeah. don't have too many earthquakes around here we have some earthquakes but i kind of figure that it survived many yes so you know japanese houses are meant to uh, are meant to move that's why they're made the way they are so yeah what, what's the flooring is this concrete i think this is concrete with pebbles in it i think this was put in much later yeah um and then this would have been originally a pounded earth floor but then they just skimmed concrete over the top of it so mm -hmm. i just cleaned it and sealed it and then there was a rotten timber here, which I took out a couple of weeks ago, um, which I still need to replace. This area is my next project. Yeah, to do something. Yeah, just some, uh, just clean the walls, paint, stain the beams, um, make something a bit nicer out of the sink area and stuff, put mm. a new beam in here. Um, it's nice, that they, they call it a mud room, right? Most yeah, places, yeah, right? And yeah. So it's great. As you come in, you have a little wash before you go in. Got a out. toilet here, so you don't have to take your shoes off to go to the toilet when you're out working in the garden or we've got barbecue going on or whatever. 
the washroom area. Um, yeah. Very good. What uh, do you use this for? Is this storage? Uh, yeah. So this All the exposed beams and everything looks so cool. Uh, Does so it yeah. freak out? any Japanese visitors because usually Japanese houses they don't leave everything exposed like this no they love to cover stuff up which is how this was when we first most most of the Japanese people we visited really like it Japanese kids are uh, always like it's like the house out of Totoro right yeah <laughs> and you can see the thatch on your next to your beams yeah all this is thatched but and then it's covered with metal on the outside on the outside it's all metal yeah right amazing and this is just extra storage you guys have so much storage yes it's very useful have you ever thought i mean in the future you could make this into another guest room if you wanted to the original house that we moved into we turned part of the attic into a room and it works really well but it's a lot of work because especially the th you can't really leave the thatch exposed because it's got 200 years of ash in it so, so any it any times down. it's windy or yeah. anything else it just right right so do you find that comes down here you got to clean that no from because here? we before we did anything downstairs we covered the entire floor of the upstairs with um weed matting so the stuff you use in the, in the garden to stop weeds growing um we just covered the entire floor with it so it all stays up here now the reason we use weed matting is because it's black and the spaces between the um, roof planks. Yeah. So you can't really see it. Whereas if we use like blue sheets or something like that, it'd be very obvious. Right, right. I've moved now, but the, yeah, this was really, really full when we, have, until a few weeks ago. Wow. It's a massive space. It is. It's like um, Stuart in Hanase Village you, uh, made his attic into yes. a theater, right? Yes, very, very cool. That is cool. He's a filmmaker. So. Yes. And it's absolutely amazing to me that you've just self-taught yourself all of the, like you just, you, like you said yesterday, you're a diving instructor. Diving instructor, bar and restaurant owner is what I am. And a Turned. brief dabble in extreme sports, but nothing to do with um, And then carpentry. you just dove right in to yes. DIY. Love it. You said you, YouTube was your friend. YouTube is my friend, my friends were my friends, are <laughs> yes. very helpful, obviously, everyone's got great advice. There's some fantastic Facebook pages, the Kaminka page, very useful. Building and renovating in Japan, very useful. Um, lots of people with knowledge that they're happy to share with you, um, which is great. Um, and you can save yourself a considerable amount of money by doing some of this stuff yourself, but there are things that you shouldn't. Electrics, Unless, you know, even if you're a skilled electrician, generally in Japan, you're not insured if you don't use a licensed electrician. A plumbing, I have no idea about plumbing. So, yeah, we got plumbers in to do the bathroom and stuff. Um, and structural stuff, I, we had a carpenter come in and take a look around. Um, and then the previous owners built this um, so they could get in the winter from the house to the road without go, having to go out in the snow, which can be three, four meters outside. This was a... They had a, like a small cottage business and that was mushroom farming. Um, and this was a mushroom farm room. Mushroom farming. Yeah. So usually it's grown on logs like shiitake. Yeah, but they grew it inside. Look at all your potatoes. I know, the neighbors very, very generous. They know Eva loves potatoes, so they give us loads of potatoes. Oh, your dog loves potatoes. She eats potatoes every day, oh, twice a day. Oh man, and is that zucchini? Zucchini, mystery vegetable. Pumpkin? Pumpkin. It's getting to that the time. The mystery vegetables are interesting. <laughs> we have no idea what to do with the mystery vegetables. And your workshop here? This is the Kura. So this is our original oh, okay. original rice barn. So you can see the super thick walls here. Yep. Oh man. And a stunning, stunning door when, when I can get it open. This is the next project to turn this into sort of a self-contained apartment type thing for friends oh yeah um, this is so cool in the summer even no matter how hot it is this room's always cool it's amazing yeah i mean a lot of the walls are basically um give them a clean and then paint them mm -hmm. um and you've got a second floor yeah we'll put a staircase in um and then the downstairs will be kitchen and living um and then upstairs will be the bedroom it's worth a look. Wow, it's worth it. And then this is the upstairs of the of the rice barn, but 
stunning massive timbers um, absolutely spectacular this was floor to ceiling treasure and gommy when we moved in um, stuff going back to the Japan Russia war and, and before oldest document we found was from 1739 no way um, and we found a piece of paper that we don't know how old our house is but it said that our house was renovated in the year 1800. Oh my God. The house is definitely, the barn I think is a newer addition, um, probably only 150 years old or so. And then, yeah, there's the padded cell that is the mushroom area. Okay. That is now storage. Wow, if you ever move anywhere else, you've got a lot to move. We're you're scuffered, filling aren't we? up, filling up your storage. These are some of the things that we found in the in the Kura. Oh my gosh, wow. We found, where is it? We found a really cool, um, like wall hanging, um, hand drawn picture of the royal family. Oh um, my gosh. Uh, and it was basically a call to action to the soldiers of Japan during the Japan Russia War. The space heaters, the kerosene space yes, heaters. Yes, these are great in the winter. During for winter. Anywhere where you know you're using it temporarily or whatever. If we've got guests staying and we use the big room or whatever, just the space heats it kerosene. up fast. Yeah, right? they're great. And then out here would be your garage. So then we go through, carry on to the garage. Yep. So these are windows, screens. That yep and windows that um, we're taking down at the moment and replacing to try and give it a bit of winter tightness. So yeah, bikes and jet washers and tools and... Um, you find yourself uh, getting stuff given or you you need certain tools? Some to, things you need, yeah. yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm, I quite like having my own tools. So secondhand shops in Japan are great for buying tools, used tools, and there are actually special secondhand shops just for tools. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you have to have space to store your winter tires and summer tires because they need changing once a year on every vehicle. Um, and then you have to have snow blowers. Oh my gosh, that must have been quite an investment, snow blower. Actually, <laughs> we got we got really lucky. Normally snow blowers, if you buy them new, are around $1,000 per horsepower and you need a 13 to 15 horsepower minimum in this area really to, to clear the snow. This one we bought used and we managed to get it for Juman. It's very old, but it's very well maintained. Snow blowing, interesting skill to have. One I never thought I'd need and it's kind of dangerous. What's dangerous? Oh, because it, it shoots things. out. Oh, uh, these yeah. things are spinning. One of our friends <laughs> fell into one this year with no, his arm. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah, slipped in front of it, fell in. His hand went into it. Luckily, it was on. It was in neutral and it was slowing down. But these things spin for a long time after you turn them off. Working on a new garage. This is our workshop, and this is Jake. Hello, hello. Hi, Jake. Our lovely Australian hello. carpenter friend. You like you like those vests, aren't they amazing? See, I can't work without it. As soon as it turns off, that's it. It's <laughs> an old fridge, isn't it? It is. We got that for 500 yen from a, from a second-hand shop. It was in a very bad way. Naomi renovated all of it. Wow, it looks beautiful. Did all the brass fittings. I've seen did the some metal very work cool uh, young people doing cafes in very rural areas right. using it as their fridge. Ah, we're going to use cafe. it as a drinks cabinet. Yeah, yeah. Well, that works as well. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Okay. So Jake's come here to spend the winter and maybe up to a year. Um, he wants to check the area out and maybe start a business here. Um, he's from Australia. He's been living in Okinawa for a while. Um, and so he reached out on a Facebook page and I responded and um, we give him free accommodation. He helps me with a couple of projects while he's finding his feet and stuff. And I'm introducing him to local builders, carpenters, people who've got work and uh, other stuff. That's awesome. Um, and so we had these spare rooms above the, above the garage, um, which I did some work on before Jake arrived and now we're just finishing them off. So it's a enclosed living space for him kind of thing. So this was all very showa and I made the mistake of taking the showa ceiling off and then it exposed these beautiful beams. Amazing. So then I couldn't just put the show a ceiling back. So now we've had to raise the entire ceiling so we can see the beam. <laughs> Beautiful Rama there. Yeah, that was here when we thingy. So we've just, we've just put new flooring in and decorated. And 
And more mountain views. Yes, that's over the river to Togari Onsen. And more houses to spot that you might want to take over. <laughs> <laughs> that's the front of our So kura. this is the kura, right? Yes. Look at those big windows. That's amazing in the front. The shutters are spectacular, yeah. aren't they? All made out of plaster. They weigh so much. Amazing. Your whole concept, uh, when I talked to you last time on the show, was it two years ago, right? Two years, yeah. Um, you were talking about you really just wanted to rebuild this community that you just saw like a, it was becoming like a ghost town, like so many rural areas in Japan. And you've done so well, like to repopulate. I think it was it was ahead of a lot of places. Houses. We found it wasn't well, you know it wasn't super failing, but there were definitely empty houses. Um, the community is getting older, as you know, all of Japanese communities are. Um, and um, there's a lot of responsibilities to living in the in the countryside with regards to work that each village does to keep that village and surrounding villages working, clearing the waterways up in the mountain, keeping the waterways in the village clear collecting trash, uh, clearing snow, all these are things that you have to do. And without people in the community actually living here full time, um, those things don't get done. Yeah. And you know, the, the guys are not getting any younger. I'm up brush cutting in the mountains with people who are 75, 80 years old. Yeah. Um, and you know, having some younger blood come and help, I think is definitely beneficial. Um, and some new ideas and, um, and a lot of people who've come have been of a like mind to me. They want to try and save old houses. You know, they want to try and have a really nice um, uh, work-life balance. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they're working remotely and traveling to Tokyo occasionally on the Shinkansen, um, but living in the countryside where their kids have got great schools here and uh, loads of space. They can go and play in the mountains. They can go skiing and snowboarding in the winter, mountain biking in the summer. Uh, yeah, we've brought in a real nice little group and hopefully that will keep expanding. Um, we've got Rowie, who's our yoga teacher. She's living in a property that we're renting at the moment. She does village yoga for the ladies for free. Uh, in, sorry, in exchange for vegetables. Um, <laughs> I love that concept. It's yes, awesome. I yoga. So. Yeah, yes, I means vegetable. Yes, I yoga. Yes. She's doing that this morning, I believe. Yeah, yes. we're going we're gonna to catch up with her on another yeah. Uh, tour soon and I'm staying in the beautiful house that it was a guest house that you it renovated. It was a beso, so a second house for, mm -hmm. for a uh, um, Now at the Minka Summit this year, you were talking about building community and hmm. doing some of these old houses, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's a strange, we're in a strange situation. We're so close to a big ski joe where there's a lot of foreign investment and a lot of people coming in. And it would be very easy for this area, because of the low property prices and the space, to become an overflow for that, which would mean a lot of absentee owners um, who wanted to buy it, renovate it, and just put it on Airbnb, um, which um, which we've got enough of up in Nozawa, you know. So and um, for for this community and to, to try and keep people living here who are actually active in the community, then. We really need full-time residents, or at least you know people who are going to live here for most of the year, um, and that seems to be working so far. And your idea to actually fix up a little bit and then rent out yeah. the minka is—I don't see other people doing that. That's a—it's a great way to get people to try. It is right. There's not a lot of money in it. <laughs> <laughs> Rents are very cheap in in Inuka, Japan. Um, so you you know doing it that way unless you manage to do it at the renovation at a really low cost, um, you're never really going to make your money back so much. Um, but for I would recommend anybody that wants to go and live in the countryside of Japan, whether it's snow country or not, um, find a place to rent, find an area, find a place to rent and live there for a while. And even if even if you're worried about the amount of rent that you pay over the space of a year or a year and a half or whatever, chances are you'll get that money back in not buying the wrong property and also being offered properties by locals when you should get to know them for a much lower price than you see things on the estate agents, uh, racks and things like that. Um, so yeah, you generally save yourself money doing that and save yourself a nightmare of buying a place, renovating it and then deciding you don't like the area or, right, or the neighbors yeah. are horrible yeah. or whatever. Because isn't that something that a lot of people who do move into the countryside always say? 
go and spend time there before yeah. you buy something, right? Yeah, definitely. Make sure this is the community you want to live in, yeah. right? Make sure you're ready for the, you know, the responsibilities of living in the community and what that entails, you know? I mean, you are moving into a traditional community where there are responsibilities. There are certain things you can do, there are certain things you can't do. We're still finding things that, uh, that are kind of, um, they don't make a great deal of sense to us, but that's the way it's always been done. So that, it is what it is. Um, and it's a small price to pay for living somewhere so beautiful. Yeah. This is the old Hirabayashi Curiosity Shop. Whoa. AKA where I put everything that I can't bear to get rid of. Well, walk us through it. <laughs> tell, us, tell us what you've got. This oh is, my gosh, these chests. So these are marriage chests and um, storage chests that have come out of um, properties that we've um, that we've either bought or ones that were being torn down and they were going to be burnt or thrown away. These guys, so when the, originally when the, the lady would marry a, a guy, she'd move to that family's house and then her family would carry this from her house to their house with their her belongings, maybe a dowry. Uh, that kind of thing. And that was kind of a ceremony to carry that. Um, wow. So they're really well made. Beautiful big boxes. Oh, wow. So my deal with this place is basically anybody that comes and visits, they can come and have a look around and stuff. And some of the stuff they can have for free. Some of the stuff I basically say to people, imagine you saw this and you wanted it and you walked into a shop and you flipped it over and you saw the price tag and you were very very pleasantly surprised what would that price be that's a good way to do it because i've got no idea and yeah. i know that if i took the time to photograph it and put it on makari i could get x amount of yen for it kind of thing but all the hassle yeah. all the time back and forth with people right and hopefully the people that take it will be friends or people oh. who have got an interest in it or, absolutely you know, it's in good condition yeah so these are a lot of the original beams? These are stuff, These. this is all my stuff that I've reclaimed from other houses that have been demolished and that will get reused. This big beam here, I'm gonna cut down the middle and then that will be the sides for the staircase in my core, in my oh, house. Oh, nice. Um, you can open it. Wow, what a great big heavy door. They're awesome. These things sell for like, mm, what? Look at those big barrels. More barrels. Yay. Please, take a barrel. <laughs> They're so heavy. There's no way I'd get it in my car. Come and have a look upstairs. Oh, lanterns. Once again, all wood, no plastic. Very nice. Because all the modern ones are made with plastic, right? Mm. That is hilarious. Take your baby for a walk. In yes. The or a small dog. Or a small dog, not our dog. All your vegetables. Snow pram. These look so Canadian to me. The, I know, right? The, the bears the, the with bears. the fish. It's a big thing locally. Is it? Yeah, it's like, it's like a Kaido thing, I think, originally. Right? Okay. Um, yeah, anything made of wood, I just can't seem to bear to get rid of it. <laughs> Old rope. Old rope, I was thinking of using that for like disguising light fixtures and stuff like that. Wood. These, this is for the... And the, it's old lacquer, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, the hot, the hot water for with soba, when you have the... Um, Very nice. You find in abandoned houses or... Yep, and in our house, in our Kura, I mean, our house was floor to ceiling gummy. It took us three months to get rid of just the stuff that wasn't treasure. Oh my God. Um, what is this? Like old safe? Old, yeah, an old lockbox. Oh, those are great, aren't they? Oh, what I've heard from uh, a lot of people is that m most people now, they can't tell the difference between, between the plastic, plastic and, the wood. and the lacquer. Mm, like reams of it. Oh, that's beautiful. It's beautiful when you can see the threads, the fibers going so through, right? You'd have a better idea of the age of that driven by the newspaper. Amazing. So these will be used by the ladies when it's raining so they don't get their feet wet or if there's a little bit of snow on the ground. And Have you tried it? I haven't. I'm just trying to find a use for them. <laughs> Decorative use. I was thinking of using them stacked in between layers of beautiful wood as like shelving. Mm-hmm. So this is from your Genkan, which is was a stable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now this is an interesting door with a glass in the middle. Hmm. 
Yeah, that's the one that I'm trying to get around to renovating to separate our two bits of our winter living accommodation. Okay. As you can see, I've started on this one, sanding it down. But um, And then you're going to leave it with opaque glass in there? Yeah, middle? I think so. Yeah. It's very interesting. You're going to put white paper around? Yes. Yeah, yeah. There's a lovely local initiative for, um, it translates, I don't know what the name is in Japanese, but it translates as the silver people. And it's basically old people from the na from the area who have skills but are retired. So they're great with doing shoji and stuff. So they come and pick it up. They take it away. They bring it back. <gasps> That's and awesome. It's like thousand yen a shoji. And they do a fantastic job. And they're super happy. Keeps them busy. Keeps them out in the community. And, and a little bit of money for, yeah. for we, them as well. We get to meet all these lovely old uji when they come and pick the stuff up. That's awesome. Boy. These glass jars. Those I don't know. I'm not sure about those. I picked them up from a barn that was being torn down in Nakano, I think. Wow, they're really beautiful. Yeah, I really Hand like blown. Them. They were all moldy and horrible inside and mm. I cleaned them all out. And, and what are these? So I thought these must be miso or something like that, but apparently not. Apparently they're mobile toilets. Oh! So as I touch it. <laughs> So they, oh, well, they take a, this out It hasn't been fields, used for a while. Um, and it's been steam cleaned as well. I've <laughs> steam cleaned everything here, don't worry. Um, they, um, they took them out into the fields and then they poo in them, basically. And then they'd use that for fertilizer or whatever. So a neighbor told me. It's better than a plastic porta potty. Yeah. <laughs> but they're, they're beautifully made. <laughs> So wait, they would poo in that tiny hole? I guess, that, or they take this off. <laughs> but if they take it off, how do they sit? Well, probably hover, I would imagine. Oh, hover. And skis? Those look like your size. <laughs> how did you find them They're your size? They're definitely smaller than mine. <laughs> so those go with those skis. All solid wood. Wow. Do you think the shoes would have been made in Japan or in? Oh yeah, these are definitely local. Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. Soba bowls. So yeah, for making soba. Okay. And the old baskets would be for, like Everything. wasabi, like oh, these river. Ones. river? These ones, I'm not sure. Maybe yeah. It looks like they belong in a river, right? It was so interesting to see these pieces of culture and tradition and history from Japan that Ed has saved. Uh, get in touch if you're interested. Now the Brokeback Minka is a project you may have heard about uh, through social media. Ed had seen this in his neighborhood. An elderly couple had moved out the next big winter. The snowfall uh, made a huge hole in the middle of the roof and he was trying to find someone to take on the project um, and help save the bones of this amazing old house. He said he spent about six weeks uh, going back and forth with people who were interested in taking on the project and eventually found someone who is now working on uh, renovating and I can't wait to get back and see the progress. It will be amazing, like many of these Akiya Minka Kominka projects, to see how they use the existing structures and foundations, which are worth saving, and add elements of modern comfort design and bring these old houses into modern relevance, places where you want to live, where you want to work, where you want to stay when you visit. That's the magic of these old Minka renovation projects. And uh, Ed has been a part of so many of these wonderful projects in his community. Big thanks to Ed and his community for showing me around and letting me see all these amazing projects that they're a part of. And of course, I really need to go back in the winter and enjoy the area in its best 
time of year, as everyone in the community says. More videos up and coming with some of Ed's neighbors who he has helped uh, get old houses to move into and renovate and be a part of the community. I think there's so much here to inspire us and interest us. I'd love to hear your comments or questions below. Uh, you want to say goodbye, Ed? Bye, guys. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Thanks for joining. See you next time. Yeah.